should have acted. They're already here. The Elder Scrolls told of their return. Their defeat was merely a delay. To the time after Oblivion opened. When the sons of Skyrim would spill their own blood. We've uh, vacated the entire Skyrim area here at the Bethesda booth at Gamescom. Could you just briefly touch on, on what you guys are, are showing off here at, at Gamescom? Uh, so we've got um, a slightly new demo for uh, Skyrim. Um, and it's really not as much of a demo as it is sort of having some folks come in. And I basically, I don't show character gen, but I create a character right at the end of character gen and just kind of head out in the world and give folks more of a sense of kind of the minute to minute gameplay exploring the world, finding stuff, showing off a lot of new things that we've introduced to the game, uh, how crafting uh, smithing works where you can create your own weapons and armor, you can improve weapons and armor, talking about things like cooking and alchemy and enchanting, showing off a bunch of different combat styles, different enemies, just trying to give folks a sense of more of the game than sort of the brief overview demo that a lot of them have gotten to see so far. Because I think, I think that's something that really sets Elder Scrolls apart from other games is the fact that it's really your game to play. You, you really just put out a lot of things for people to sort of explore and, and do whatever they want with. Exactly. I mean, we, we consider it a big sandbox. So we create this giant fantasy sandbox for you. And then after that, it's really up to you to decide what kind of character do you want to be? What kind of things do you want to do? And what's the story that, that you want to play? Because it's really up to you. You can play the main quest or not. Um, we have four different factions in the game, and you can join those and play through the storylines for those. So it's really up to you to decide, what do I want the game to be about? What kind of character do I want to be in this world? And, and you know, what would be fun to me? I think, I think something that's different with games these days and, and back in the day is, is the fact that you get a lot of telemetry, you get a lot of numbers, you, you see how people play the games, and you can sort of change the design to correspond to that or, or change it up completely. So. In terms of like what you're doing different compared to Oblivion and, and sort of how you're building on, on what people experience with that game, could you touch on that? I mean, I think part of that comes for the way that we've built the world um, in terms of its size-wise, it's probably about the same as Oblivion, but content-wise, there's more content in that same space. Um, being able to provide a diversity of, of content, um, spending a lot more time um, designing dungeons by level designers, um, people whose job is to go through and make dungeons sort of interesting little almost quests unto themselves. Sometimes they've got little backstories to them, the things that you find, traps, puzzles, all of those things are, are um, important to somebody who's going out into the world that every time they find something it feels new and different and fresh. Um, you know, a, a lot of the the info that we get from players is just the kind of content that they like, what kinds of things did they stick to, which, which quest lines did they stick to all the way to the end, at what point did they drop off, what are the barriers to entry to different parts of the game, and just trying to make the game more accessible. Not, not easier or harder or, or different, but uh, in some cases it's just about accessibility. How easy uh, is it to, to get to where you want to go, to get the information you want. Things like our UI are, are part of that. Um, Trying to, trying to get players into their inventory and out of their inventory more quickly if they want to, letting them spend more time uh, you know, really um, looking at items and inspecting things that they found if that's what they want to do. So I think all of those things that you mentioned are things that we take in and look at what pe people's experiences were and then try and make that a part of our process. So similarly, the team moved on from Fallout 3. And, and are there anything, things that are crossbred between the two projects or, or are you really looking to make sure that this is a completely different thing and you don't want to mix too much? Well, I think it's probably a, some of both. Um, so obviously, we, we are the creation of whatever it is that we've made. Uh, all of our experiences in making Fallout 3 are part of uh, you know, who we are and in going into Skyrim. So they are both big, go wherever you want, do whatever you want games. They may have very different settings and vibes and gameplay mechanics, but, but the core fundamental aspect of going out and exploring and finding things to do um, I think is is something we have taken over from Fallout 3 to Skyrim at the same time. As you said, they are very different worlds and very different games. And so, you know, it was great to be able to go from, you know, a fantasy RPG of the Elder Scrolls into something post-apocalyptic like Fallout 3. It's nice to be able to come back out of that now and change the pace again so that it doesn't get 
um, sort of monotonous or repetitive that we are able to take our time and bring some fresh new ideas to, you know, both to the series as well as to role playing games in general. And I think something you did with, with both Fallout games, uh, Bethesda did, is, is, is the DLC was very sort of nice and tailored and experienced and, and very different from the way DLC had been in the past and, and with Elder Scrolls and so on and so forth. Are there, are there experiences that you're taking from that into Elder Scrolls? Certainly. I mean, if you look at what we did with Oblivion, uh, it, it hit the whole range of DLC. So you had the very small stuff like horse armor and, uh, and some of the smaller stuff to the middle-sized stuff like Knights of the Nine to the really big expansion stuff like Shivering Isles. So it really covered the whole spectrum. Fallout 3 tried to find a spot somewhere in the middle around Knights of the Nine and that kind of thing in terms of the content. Where we'll go with Skyrim is honestly TBD. We continue to look for what's the right mix of amount of content, um, how long it takes us to make it, and how long after release we'll be able to bring it to fans, uh, and what it'll cost, and trying to find a sweet spot of all those things. So folks feel like they're getting something, you know, when they're ready for it sooner rather than later at, at a price they think is reasonable for the amount of content that we're giving them. And so we'll keep, we'll keep looking at that and playing with that, and we'll just have to see what we come up with for, for Skyrim. One thing that I really like about the Elder Scrolls series is its sequels, but since you're moving to a different land, it's also a, a game of its own, a, a unique touch. What, what do you feel that Skyrim brings to the Elder Scrolls series that perhaps players haven't seen before? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a few big things and a lot of little things. Um, it's big things in, uh, you know, dragons are obviously a big change. Um, We've we've um, brought the perk system to a whole different place within the Elder Scrolls where, you know, in Oblivion it was something that you got every so often as you were leveling up a skill, you'd get these new abilities. Now they're actually things that you pick and can choose. Giving the player a lot of choices for those and then having them only be able to pick some of them makes it a much more interesting mechanic in terms of feeling like you have control, what kinds of things you want to get better at. Um, you know, the combat is something that we've really tried to evolve and make, and make better with now having... Uh, Two weapons in each hand, being able to mix weapons and magic either way um, so that it, it gives a lot of diversity in terms of the way you play the game and, and fight stuff. Um, and then, you know, adding new things like uh, at changing the way alchemy works, changing the way enchanting works, adding all new stuff for cooking and, and crafting and smithing. All, all of those things, I think, combine to make the entire thing feel very fresh and new. And we want it to be a game that... If you've played all the Elder Scrolls games, it feels familiar, but at the same time, it feels different. And if you've never played an Elder Scrolls game, you can start with this one and you haven't missed anything. It, it, it stands on its own in terms of you don't have to have played Oblivion to, to be able to jump right into Skyrim and, and get exactly what's going on. So you locked down a release date pretty early on. Uh, bold move. Uh, do you still feel as, as happy about that now that we're moving it closer to... November? Yeah, I mean, I, I think ultimately we do. Obviously, um, picking a release date is a pretty big deal. I think it was something that, you know, Todd and I talked about very early on, and, he's, and, and he felt pretty strongly about we can hit this date. Uh, you know, I'm confident that we can make it, and I think the earlier that we can announce it, it, um, it, helps, it only helps us in terms of making sure it's on top of everybody's mind. Like, hey, 11, 11, 11, you know Skyrim is coming. No matter where you live in the world, you're getting the game that day. It's easy to remember. It, it's global, so I think, you know, we're still pretty happy with having announced it, and we're certainly happy with where the game is at and, and making that release date. Giving the competitors ample time to move away from that day. Well, you know, it's going to be a crazy holidays. I mean, if you, whether whether you're a, you work in this industry or not, if you step back and you know, if you're a gamer like you are and like I am, and you look at the slate of stuff that's coming out starting in in September with uh, with the Gears and Resistance, and then October you've got Rage and and Batman, and then Battlefield, and then next thing you know, you've got Uncharted and Skyrim and Modern Warfare, like. You know, what more could you ask for? There's so much great stuff to play. I don't know where you were. I think you can ask for more time. Yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot to choose from. And we certainly hope when folks are, are making their holiday list that they, they put Skyrim on there. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.